Hey, Brian, what do you call an Irish seven-course meal? Six-pack and a potato. Oh. It's not funny. I heard it. This is my little brother. We are white Irish drinkers! Oh, the title, for one thing. <laughs> said to myself, this sounds like me. Uh, no, I, uh, the same thing, I think, that attracts a lot of people to work. It's, it's really a wonderfully written character, a character that gives me a lot of stuff to play around with, very multifaceted, the pretty clear arc. Um, and just, you know, it allowed me to kind of like look at a lot of things that uh, I would be interested in tackling in my own life if, if, if the same circumstances were there, you know what I mean? So like. Really interesting to sort of ask yourself questions about how 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 would you be brave enough to make the sacrifice and leave your town if that was what it required for you to kind of pursue what it was that you love? You know, would you have the balls to run through a cemetery naked? Uh, <laughs> which I think actually for Brian, my character was probably a little easier because I was doing it in front of a camera and a bunch of people. <laughs> Travel? I mean, don't you want to walk down the street and know it's all going to be new? Yeah, I'm not going to make believe I belong somewhere else. Which one of us is making believe? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> filming it was, um, well, first of all, it was very cold that morning, which, uh, naturally, as a man, you uh, would rather it not be, for obvious reasons. Uh, but it ended up being really fun. I mean, dude, like, how often do you get to run through a cemetery naked? You know what I mean? It's like, crazy. So, um, that, it, it was cool, man. Uh, you know, we cleared most of the set. Most of the crew was gone. We had sort of skeleton crew, just obviously for respecting us as the actors. Um, and the first time you do it, you're kind of like, oh, shit, here we go. But, uh, you know, so the first time you do it, you're like, oh, man, here, we're going to do it. There we go. Are we going to do it? We're going to do it. Nope, naked. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then... Um, and then it's just cool, man. It's like skinny dipping, dude. You're just running around and having fun, and it's, it's, it's cool. Might I point out that it's a bit chilly? Uh, as for watching it, you know, like, uh, earlier Leslie, my, you know, the, the woman in the film, Shauna, but she, she was saying earlier that it gets easier every time you watch it. I thought so too. Then I watched it with my grandma. Not so easy. <laughs> you know, I looked over at her right before that scene started to play and I'd kind of like whisper over grandma, I was like, Grandma, now's the scene when you close your eyes. Just do it. And she's like, what, honey? And, you know, she had this whole whole response like, uh, oh, I've seen it a million times, and I'm like, yeah, but you haven't quite seen it like this, <laughs> you know what I mean, maybe 20 years ago, but, uh, so, <laughs> that was awkward, man, because the greatest thing about that is that while that scene is being shot, you're looking down in the cemetery, so when, you know, they're hiding behind the graves with, like, safety blankets, you know what I mean? So you're, you're running and you're doing all this thing and then at some point you're kind of running and you hear somebody yell cut in the background and then all of a sudden leaping out from behind a grave is this woman with a sheet <laughs> and she just pounces on you and wraps you up. But more than it being awkward is you're extremely grateful because it's fucking freezing so it's, it's nice to have something to cover up with. <laughs> Just imagining that in my mind is kind of funny. Just charging <laughs> after you with a blanket. I had two detectives here last night looking for your brother. I got something new in the works. You can make us some real money. Lake Essential gets a shipment in every Saturday night, so if we hit him on a Sunday, we can clean him out. I don't want to steal anything anymore. What are you gonna do? You gonna stay here the rest of your life? Do you do all these? It's not like I could make a living out of it. We, when we got on the, on this, on the, with the stunt coordinator, and we were doing the fight choreography scenes. You know, Stephen is such a wrecking machine. The guy is just huge. 
and, he, and he's in such good shape, you know, so he's like throwing us around and stuff. But he's got a great sense of humor about the whole thing too, you know, so he's not, he's not an intimidating guy in that way. He's probably intimidating for the first, you know, few minutes that you meet him. You think so? I should have let you rot in there. What kind of trouble are you in? Sometimes they were unavoidable. Uh, our, we had a very zealous stunt coordinator. <laughs> it was Pat, who was our stunt coordinator guy, and like four of his friends were the big dudes who were all kind of like holding me up. And they get kind of carried away sometimes. So after that, I was covered with so many bruises and shit. I think I caught like a good solid right from Pat at least once, which is the kind of guy you don't want to get hit by at all. Um, and in that one, I was not saying, just go, just let me have it, man, just, just do it, you know, because I still had, you know, I didn't really want facial reconstructive surgery afterwards. But um, definitely in the scenes, especially, like, there's a scene where I get slapped by Danny. And uh, I don't know why, but that scene ended up being, like, we, we really got into it, you know. We really, really uh, kind of committed in a, in a way, sort of heavier level in some of the other scenes. And so at that point, you know, rather than worrying about us not getting a take because the slap didn't read, uh, we were just like, no, fuck it. And I was like, Jeff, just fucking hit me, you know, just do it. Um, but you'd be surprised, some of that doesn't look as real, I think. Uh, yeah, they say that, you know, I've been told that a lot of times, that, you know, selling a punch, uh, oftentimes it won't look as real if they're actually hitting each other. I'll tell you what, I'll wait for my friend Ray to get out of jail. At least he's a pro. He won't fuck it up like you will. Oh, yeah? If he's such a fucking pro, what's he doing in fucking jail? Watch your fucking mouth. Don't fucking hit me. I'm not hitting you, you faggot. It's a slap. Like a girl. You don't even deserve a man's punch. Don't fucking hit me! Don't fucking hit me! Or what? Or what? You're a fucking misfit, Brian. Remember that. That's all you are, that's all you ever will be. A fucking misfit. I had an experience when I was uh, in high school that was like one of the most painful things I had to experience actually. I uh, was walking after school to get something from 7-Eleven and uh, some kid came up and uh, you know asked me to get my money out and give it to him. I told him I wasn't going to do it and he slapped me and I didn't do anything. And I felt horrible. I felt horrible. I felt like I'd just completely back down. So you, you know, you kind of have to relive some of that stuff. It feeds you, um, so it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't feel good at all. If you came to me like this, you think I'd say no? I don't come to you like this. It's because you got no loyalty. The problem is what you are. That's what you turn out to be a fuck. You understand? No matter how hard I try, I'm never gonna be like you, Danny. You die! You live me, you dumbass! We can get out of here and go somewhere and live real lives. I'm just gonna give it to us. We gotta take it. That's a hard one, but nice job. <laughs> you, know, like, you, you, you guys didn't see that, but what he just did was nice job. <laughs> <laughs>